How lucky are we? Scream is back for his sixth installment of the franchise, and this time, Ghostface takes Manhattan. The guys from Radio Silence are back at the helm of Scream 6. Of course, they gave us Scream 5, and they gave us Ready or Not, and they gave us VHS. Samara Weaving from Ready or Not joins the cast of Scream 6. I'm not going to tell you what happens to her yet, uh, but we also see... Her character, well, uh, somebody dressed in a costume of her character from Ready or Not as a little Easter egg on the subway train at one point. We've seen it in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. And as we know, Scream 6 takes place in New York City on Halloween or over the course of a few days around Halloween as uh, the Carpenter sisters and Mindy and Chad have all left Westboro and moved to New York City to start college and to get away from the whole ghost face thing. Uh, I love the pacing of Scream 6. We all know the formula of Scream by now. We know that fast pace open and then the credits hit and then the real movie begins. Well, I felt like in Scream 6, that fast pace started for the open and it just maintained. It just kept going. We got hit with action. We have a much more aggressive style of killing in this movie. And I thought that they did a really good job of sticking to the formula while kind of knocking things on their head a little bit so it didn't feel too familiar, it didn't feel repetitive. I found that bringing the movie into New York City actually did a good job of bringing this franchise into the modern day without being super reliant on the movies that came before it. I think that it also helped that in Scream 5, they did such a good job of transitioning out of the old characters and into the new cast and what this version of the Scream franchise is going to be all about. Of course, we do have Kirby back from Scream 4. Kirby, we thought died in Scream 4, but we never actually saw the body. We got an Easter egg in Scream 5 when she was on like the YouTube side, whatever, suggested videos. And now she's officially back back in Scream 6, as a character who is breathing, as with any character in Scream, though, you're questioning her motives the whole time. It was really cool seeing Jenna Ortega come back to being Tara Carpenter. The last time that we saw Jenna Ortega in a Scream movie was like a year and change ago, and her star power has grown so much since that movie came out that, that it was cool to see that performer come back to this character and see that that character has grown and evolved. And it made me wonder, right? Now that she's become such a famous actress, does our final girl, who's really her sister, Sam, Melissa Barrera, is she gonna be able to be that person that this movie is really centered around? And the answer is yes. Melissa Barrera is perfect in this movie. She's perfect for the franchise. She's just complicated enough, especially because we don't have Nev Campbell. This is not a spoiler. It was announced before the movie came out. I think that the the filmmakers said that uh, the, there wasn't room in the script for her. And Nev said, actually, it was because she got lowballed. Whatever the drama was, they did what they do with Scream and they made it work. Scream has to be pound for pound the best horror franchise in terms of pure quality movies. There are no bad Scream movies. There are Scream movies that are worse than others, but there's no Scream movie where you go, okay, this is where it got horrendous. And that maintains, even without Nev, Melissa Barrera is such a strong lead and and the the whole backstory with her be, being Billy Loomis's daughter adds such an element that I thought it really I thought it really worked. This is not my favorite scream movie ever. Not by a long shot. I think uh it would be either my third or fourth. Like I said, all the scream movies are good. So that ain't a shot. Obviously Scream 1 is the best. I think it probably goes one, two, five, six, four, three for me. That's probably the order that I would put these Scream movies in. But it's kind of complicated to judge 
this movie. It has to be judged on different terms than you would judge Scream 5. I thought Scream 6 is a terrific chapter in this franchise. Scream 5 was just this wonderful movie that that had all this rich history. It was like Scream 5 was basically an offshoot of the original trilogy with a little bit of four mixed in. Scream 6 is a pure offshoot of Scream 5 to me. So you really have to go in with Scream 5 as that new baseline as opposed to the whole trilogy. Now, of course, the Billy Loomis history and all the whole franchise's history is still baked in. But ultimately, Scream 5 was a sequel to the whole franchise. Scream 6 is a sequel specifically to Scream 5. I will tell you this, though. When you talk about maintaining the integrity of the franchise, man, will I pop for that Scream score every single time. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, just every every little thing, those, those songs have become so synonymous. Those pieces of music have become so synonymous with what Scream is. I just, I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, now you can see in the chapter markers, I'm gonna start the spoilers here. So if you don't wanna hear any spoilers, skip to the conclusion part of this video. If you've seen the movie or you wanna talk spoilers, let's let's talk about them. All right, you ready? I give you enough time? So. I, I love Ghostface as an entity in this one. I, I really enjoyed the newness of it. Um, I was able to look past the fact that the shrine, I mean, makes no sense. There is no way. But uh, the shrine was cool enough that it just, it didn't matter. That it didn't make a ton of sense. And the fact that, you know, there was a cop there helping put it all together at least they made an attempt to add some logic to it. Um, you know, I think that the thing about Scream movies, especially this deep into the franchise, when there's so much story, is that when you add totally new characters into the sixth movie, and those are the characters that end up being the killers, it's never going to feel that fulfilling. You've really got to give me somebody that I've spent time investing in, especially Ethan. Like when Ethan revealed himself, it was like, okay, it was nice that, that they ended up being related to, you know, Richie from Scream 5. But I didn't connect with Ethan even in this movie at all. He was a, a peripheral character, right? It's like, I guess they threw you off the path of him being a potential suspect because he barely did anything in the whole movie, but whatever. That's I, I thought it worked fine for this movie. It just wasn't the ultimate scream. What I felt like when I was watching it, right, is that we were watching a chapter. I wasn't so caught up with who the killers were in Scream 6, because I'm more caught up with what feels like a story that's gonna be told, I hope, over multiple movies. It did really well in the box office. So hopefully Scream 7 is coming right up. And there's a lot there for Scream 7. To me, and maybe I just have too much of a wrestling brain, but to me, it kind of hit me. When, when Sam was stabbing Officer What's-His-Name after, you know, whatever, like 20 times or whatever, just kept going and going. The, the lust that she has for the kill. She can still justify all her kills, but the enjoyment that she gets out of killing these people and almost the pride that she has when her sister is killing people makes me feel like if done right, we are two movies away from Samantha Carpenter being Ghostface, but from us being able for the first time to watch the movie from Ghostface's perspective. I think that that's where, that, that's the spot that it's got to go. I think we're going to get one more movie with a mystery killer. Next movie, I vote either Chad, just because I love Chad so much, and they've never really pulled the trigger on a beloved character being Ghostface. You always wanted Dewey to be Ghostface, but he was always the beloved character. Chad has become so beloved, he got the Dewey finish. He got the Dewey finish in this movie. 
Imagine the turn of going from the Dewey finish to becoming Ghostface in the next movie. And then and then at the end of the movie, we're at this place where we're torn because we want to see Ghostface gets kill, get killed, but we don't want to see Chad get killed, but Chad is Ghostface, so what are we going to do here? That or I don't remember if they killed Randy's sister or not in Scream 5. If Randy's sister is still alive, you could easily bring back Randy's sister and make her Ghostface in Scream 7. You could do Randy's sister and Chad. But, but, but those are my picks for Scream 7. And then Scream 8 is where Samantha finally succumbs to the fact that she's a Loomis and becomes Ghostface. And maybe that's where we get, if we keep going with Scream movies, we almost get a Jason Voorhees thing where now there is one Ghostface and we follow Ghostface and the victims change every time, but Ghostface remains the same. Like Jason Voorhees, like Freddy Krueger, like all of this. I feel like that's the only place this goes. I know that she dropped Billy Loomis's mask at the end of the movie, but I feel like she probably went back and picked it up. There is no way that that girl does not keep stabbing people. She loves it too much. She has a great time doing it. Also loved, by the way, that the stew theory was finally acknowledged, that we had a full-on acknowledgement of the stew theory, and it was kind of poo-pooed. Now, it doesn't make sense, the idea that Stu is still alive. Like, we got away with it with Kirby, but the idea that Stu had a TV put on his head Technically, we never saw him dead, but that was 1996. We're 17 years, 16, 17 years removed from that. And nobody has mentioned in any of the follow-up movies, there's been six, five movies since then. Nobody's mentioned that Stu's body was never recovered. Nobody has mentioned that he was in a mental facility. Nobody, if you were gonna do Stu is still alive, you would have had to have done it in two or three. Otherwise, it's too absurd at this point, which is why I can't, as much as I'd love to see Stu come back, it, it, logically, I don't see how you could possibly make it work. All right, no more spoilers. We're done. We discussed it. I really enjoyed Scream 6. I am so happy that the level of quality of these Scream movies has maintained at a certain point. You can count on a Scream movie to be good. And guess what? Scream 6 was really, really good. Not the greatest Scream story ever, but an awesome chapter. Uh, I, I would, If you like any Scream movies, you're going to love this one. Plus, it's way more brutal. There's way less humanity in Ghostface as a killer. It's just uh, they send the trailer, Ghostface is different, and Ghostface is indeed different. Go check it out. Let me know what you thought of the movie uh, in the comments of this video, and we'll see you next time.